Hi, everybody. My name is Moss Jackson. I'm a clinical psychologist and success coach. And I've been thinking lately about um, what we're all going through in terms of anxiety, the tension, the political mess that we've been in, besides just trying to live our lives as stress-free as possible. So I really have come to the conclusion that stress is a killer. And I think our predominant malady in our society is chronic stress syndrome. So what I'm doing today is the first of a series of really interesting workshops, and I hope you'll get real value from this, to have a breakthrough into um, the psychology of well-being. I'm going to call it the psychology of immortality. And I'll talk to you more about it. Whether that means you're going to live forever, I don't know. But I think I have a technique and strategies to extend your life 10 to 15 years, to increase the quality of your life, and to give you the extraordinary life of success, accomplishment, and satisfaction I think all of us deserve. So today's conversation is a primer for breakthrough thinking. Okay, next slide. Okay, go to the next one. Oh, here we go. So anyway, there's an old Cherokee legend. And by the way, Nikki, go to the next slide. Okay. Okay, here we have two wolves. We have a black wolf and a white wolf. So there's an old Cherokee legend of a little boy who got in a fight with his brother, and he, his brother beat him up and took his toy away. And he got really, really upset. So he ran to his, his father, grandfather, who was the wise man, the medicine man of the village, and he said, I want my tomahawk. My grandfather said, why do you want my tomahawk? The tomahawk. Or, or give me a knife. And the grandfather said, why? He says, because my goddamn brother took my toy. It's my toy. And I want to kill him. The grandfather scratched his head and said, you know, it's very interesting. Here, I want to tell you a story. There are two wolves that live in your heart. They also live in my heart. They live in everyone's heart. One is the wolf of love. And one is the wolf of hate. The wolf of hate, by the way, is greedy, angry, it wants revenge, it wants to humiliate, beat people up, take. Uh, it's a pretty nasty character. But there's another wolf that lives in your heart, which is the wolf of love, the wolf of forgiveness, the wolf of sense of humor, the wolf of compromise, the wolf of generosity. And it's a battle between these two wolves. They're, they're fighting each other. And the little boy, Scratch his head, wow, I never knew that, Dad, that we have two wolves, a wolf of hate and a wolf of love. Which one wins? And the grandfather smiled, because it was a great question, and he answered, it all depends upon the one you feed. See? Next slide, please. So we are all wired to um, experience more of the wolf of hate or the wolf of love. I think we have to really work with the wolf of love. I think the wolf of hate is kind of ingrained into our evolutionary brains. And by the way, in a later seminar, I'm going to be talking about how our brains are wired and why negativity is more present than positivity. So we have to really work at changing the internal film of our brains, of our minds, away from hate, the suspicion, and fear, the love, compassion, and generosity. That's what this program is really about. Being more spirited, more generous with yourself, more self-caring, but also being caring and empathic and connected to other people. Next slide. So there are a number of questions you can ask yourself and you may want to write this down. And again, we will come back to these really important questions. Because when I work with people, they're working with people for over 40 years, the people who are really navigating their life, not surviving, uh, they're very inquisitive and they've asked themselves these kinds of questions and they have answers to these questions. And I think these answers to these questions give them a guideline or a GPS to live a great life. The first one is, you have a compelling vision to wake up to. You know, what's your future looking like? And what do you have to accomplish in your life? Second one is, what's your mission? It's very interesting. I once went to a Ritz Carlton and I got invited to attend a morning conference where the um, head of the hotel was talking to about 250 staff people about what's our mission for the day. And Ritz Carton, I think, has 26 principles to, to work by or to live by. And he walked up to somebody, I think she was a housekeeper, and he said, 
So Betsy, what's our mission for today? He didn't tell them what the mission was. He asked her, what's our mission? And she said, to bring a smile to every customer's face. He said, that's our mission for today. That is it. All we're doing is bringing a smile to people's day. And then another question is, if you have the vision as to what do you want to build, and the mission is, what's our purpose for being here? Is do you have do you have practices and a toolkit that allow you to feel connected, powerful, and safe? Because if you can feel connected, focused, powerful, and safe, you are now navigating. I don't think most people know how to do that. Another question is, are you building memories of your future? I don't spend a lot of time ruminating about my past and regretting what I've done. I spend a lot of time thinking about my future. And I'll share a secret with you. One of my visions of the future, memories, is I'm going to be 125 years old. Not, not soon. But my wish or my desire is to be 125 and have a great ceremony to invite all my loved ones and my friends and talk about what my life has been like. What have I accomplished? Uh, what have I done? What have been the obstacles I've gotten over? What have I learned from my experience? I don't know if you've ever done it, but I enjoy thinking about my future. It kind of invigorates me in the present. Now, some people, like the Japanese, I think, <clears throat> have really long visions, like uh, 250 years into the future, uh, that they think about that guide their choices. The tribes often have long-term visions because it allows them to think about how do we want to treat our loved ones and our young ones so they inherit the legacy of our future and we're building as a community a great life and really really important is you know how to self-regulate your internal map how do you handle this goddamn wolf of hate so you quiet him down or her down and allow the wolf of love to show up and that is another seminar we're going to be looking at very carefully because you need to know how to reduce danger and lack of safety in your life. And there are techniques to do that now. Next slide. So here's my definition of uh, success. Uh, having worked with thousands of um, individuals, kids, teenagers, adults, professionals, business people, salespeople, whatever, husbands and wives, this is the formula that I've come up with. If you want to be successful, you need to have passion. You need to be in love with something, like a vision or a mission. You need to set very specific goals that you can work towards every day, every week, every month. You need to be in action. So passion gives you desire. Goals gives you a plan, something to plan for. But you got to be in action. Wishing gets you no place, just disappointment. But if you're in action, you're taking the steps. And hopefully you're taking the, the, the useful steps that gets you closer to your goals so you can fulfill your passion. Now, I wish it were just that easy, but you're going to come across bumps and obstacles along the way, and here's where you have to have grit and resiliency. So if you want to be successful, fall in love. Like, I love being creative. Uh, that's why I'm doing this series. I, I decided with my friend Nikki, he said, Nikki, help me put the series together. So we're putting together a video series. Every month, we're going to do a video like this, a, a webinar. In between the webinars, I'm going to be looking at doing a short version of actions you can take based upon the webinar between the big webinar. So um, for me, my passion is curiosity, creativity, and contribution. When I have those elements satisfied, I am very happy. And that, that pushes me to set goals like doing this webinar. I mean, to tell you the truth, this is my first webinar. I'm a little nervous about it, but my passion is stronger than my fear. But now I'm in action. I'm actually conducting a seminar, and I'm being resilient. I did my breathing exercises. I made some notes. If I make a mistake, I'm just going to say, I think I screwed that up. Let me get back on track. And now I have my formula for success. Next slide. So, I wish I could say more of us are succeeding in life than not. I don't think that's true. I think the world is divided into navigators, survivors, and victims. I talk about this a lot in my first book, Navigating to Success. I think the date on that was 2010. It's also on Amazon if you want to look that up. Um, about 10% of us are navigators. Around 50% are survivors. 40% are victims. 
I think before this goddamn election, probably 15 to 20 percent of us were navigators. Now many of us are falling apart. We're anxious. We're scared. We're confused. We don't know where the hell we're going. We don't trust our leadership. So it throws you into chronic stress syndrome. Too much stress will pull you into being a victim. Victims suck. Victims are a waste of time. Unfortunately, there are a lot of victims on the planet now, and you want to get away from them as soon as possible. Or if you can help them move and get some grit and courage and get them into survivor, that's okay. I'd much rather be a survivor than a victim, but I'd much rather be a navigator than a survivor. At times, I definitely become a survivor. I think I'm a survivor right now because I'm pissed about the election. I'm trying to figure out how to take care of myself and my family and my clients. My clients, many of them, are anxious and nervous and really upset. I'm doing my best to prevent them from slipping into being victims. Because once you're in victim mode, it's just self-pity, wallowing in the swamp of misery, and it's really hard to pull yourself out. Because you're giving all your power away. Next slide. So, really important question. Is what do human beings need and want? I, I think we need three uh, basic things. I think we need to feel safe. We need to feel connected. We need to feel powerful. And what do I mean by that? Safety is I'm not in danger. I'm not afraid of myself. I'm not afraid of other people. I'm not afraid of the world. And I can self-regulate my emotions. I know when I'm getting adrenalized with too much cortisol and too much stress is crossing through my body. I have techniques, which I'm going to talk about in a little while. And in the latest seminar, we're going to spend a lot of time working on what's the toolkit you need to feel safe. The other, other important uh, psychological need is connection. You know that little baby under the year of one, if they're raised without affection and rocking, even though they've been fed like in an orphanage or uh, diapers change, in some places their mortality rate could be as high as 30%. We found this out in the Second World War when parents were killed and children were taken into orphanages with a 30% mortality rate in some of the orphanages. In the other orphanages, there was no mortality rate. It was very low because the babies were picked up, rocked, and nurtured, and sung to, and stroked. So we need connection. We need to have empathy. We need to be concerned about each other. We need to be compassionate. We need to be able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. I appreciate what they're going through. And there are certain tools that I'll teach you on how to be connected. Because some of you don't do a great job being connected. The third psychological need is power. You need to have a feeling of, I can make it happen. I'm a can-do person. I'm a problem solver. I'm curious. I'm creative. I ask questions. Uh, I'm a, I push to get a good answer. And if I fail, I have the courage and the resiliency to bounce back. So these three psychological needs of safety, connection, and power are essential, I think, to live a long life, to reduce inflammation, get rid of chronic stress syndrome, and really enjoy your life and become a navigator. Next thing. So these three needs are connected to different parts of our brain. So 400 million years ago, we developed what's called our survival brain. I, I have it as an alligator. And if you look at it, you see the alligator down there. Alligators go back 400 million years old. Part of our brain, which is in the, the back of our head, is your reptilian brain. And all it cares about is safety. The alligator, when it gets scared, it has two sol three solutions. It snaps, which means it fights. It, it burrows into the mud, which means it runs away. Or it freezes. So you've had experiences where you've been so scared, you've frozen your tracks. And we have caught in headlights. There are other times you fought. There are other times you ran away. So that's safety. The power need is based in the front of our skulls, which is the thinking brain. It's the frontal lobes. That's the part of the brain that wants to solve problems. It likes to think about hypotheses and be curious and be creative. Uh, it wants to figure things out. And that's about 100,000 years old. So we got two brains right now. The thinking brain, which is about 100,000, and we got an alligator, which is 400 million. And we got one in the middle, represented by the, the gorilla. That, that's the emotional brain. That's the part of our brain, our early mammalian brain, that wants connection. That part of your brain is about a million years old. So I have a question for you. 
which brain wins if there's a conflict and logic wants to do one thing and safety brain wants to do another and your gorilla wants to do a third which one wins well if you're scared enough your alligator wins the alligator has more uh, neurons and fibers shooting up into the frontal part of your brain than the opposite there are not a lot of nerve nervous connections neural connections going from your thinking brain down into your emotional and emotion and, and survival brain so when you're scared you become pretty stupid in fact you lose about 40 to 50 percent of your intelligence that's why and i made my wife a promise because i i kind of got my mom's anger whenever i'm angry i shut my goddamn mouth i move away because i'm dangerous i say bad things you know embarrassed to say that but it's true oh by the way i just did a power thing and i did a connection thing by saying i'm a little embarrassed by this i'm sharing that with you which makes me feel more connected but my power brain likes that and wants to tell the truth then when i calm down i come back and i talk with her i say okay gorilla and logical brain help me figure out what has to be said without being nasty and imperiling her safety or my safety the worst thing you want are two alligators talking to each other they don't talk they snap okay got it three psychological needs safety connection and power connected to three different parts of the brain and the key is to get these three parts of the brain working together to take care of us okay looks like okay so this is very brief i'll just explain this to you the, our brain is evolutionary in its development it goes back 400 million years old and the key to navigate is to figure out how to get these three brains to work together the purpose of this webinar series is to redesign your brain yes redesign your brain because if i could help you redesign your brain and get these characters the gorilla the computer and the um, alligator to work together you will feel less stress you'll have better chemicals secreted in your body will get rid of your cortisol and your adrenaline you'll trust yourself and other people and you'll be able to live a life and be able to get past all this fear anger and suspicion that we now live with in other words the wolf of love will win over the wolf of hate. That's my goal. Hope that appeals to you, because this is what you're going to get. Next slide. Next slide. Go, go for a couple of slides. We're going to pass, just pass that one. We'll come back to that. Next one. Okay, so very briefly, because we don't have a lot of time left, there are three keys to building a breakthrough living into what we call the psychology of immortality. By the psychology of immortality, in your body, that you're going to live powerfully and forever. You may not live forever. I mean, that may happen in the future. We don't have that technology now. But I think there's a spirit of immortality that I want to capture. Now, for power, we have a number of tools, which we're going to go into much more extensively at a later time. But I want to tell you about one power tool. You know, we talked about it before, a vision and mission. Every day when I wake up, before I get out of bed, I, I think about three questions. I think about what do I want to experience today? What do I want to learn? And what do I want to contribute? And if I can answer those three questions, that's my GPS for the day. Okay? So that's just an example of, of increasing power. And every time I do that, I develop the powerful part of my brain. Okay? And now it's a GPS and it guides me through the day. Next slide. There's another tool in the toolbox. It's your safety. Deep diaphanous breathing is very, very good. Deep breathing down into your tummy. And breathing out all the toxins. Breathe in health, breathe out the toxins. Uh, another one is having gratitude. Each day, I do five gratitudes. I often do it driving in my car to work because I start to get a little irritated and worried about the day. And I don't want my wolf of hate taking me over or my wolf of fear. So I do gratitude. I ask myself the three questions, what I want to experience, what do I want to learn, what do I want to contribute. And then I do my, my gratitude. I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my children. I'm grateful for my old dog, Peanut Butter, who's been dead for 25 years. Not that I'm grateful that he's dead, but I'm grateful for the, for the pleasure that he brought me. So it doesn't matter if it's an animal, a person alive or dead. But gratitude really feed the connecting part of your brain and make you feel safer. We'll get more into this at a longer time. 
And next slide. And then we have connection, which is, and this is the most important, which is listen more than you talk. We talk too damn much. You should be listening 70% of the time, talking 30. Unfortunately, it's the opposite. We talk 80, 70, 90% of the time, and most of the time we don't even listen. There have been studies to show that when people are interviewed after they've had a conversation, they only understood or remember about 40% of what the other person intended. 40%. Now, you may be expressing something to somebody, thinking like you've been very clear. They walk away with 40% understanding. Here's the interesting stat. In 24 hours, they forgot 60% of what they learned. So that gives you, what, 28% efficiency in, in listening? And, and the worst is they make up the rest. They make up a story about what they think you said, and that becomes a reality. So if there's one skill, one tool you want to practice in connection is shut up, listen more, listen and say, hey, this is what I'm hearing you say. That makes sense to me. Wow, I had not thought about that before. Let's talk some more about that. That, by the way, will make a person feel connected. There are mirror neurons and a, chem a chemical in our body called oxytocin, which is the chemical that really brings people closer together Again, we'll get much more into this at a later seminar. Next slide. So, the summary. So, who we are, we're mind body entities. Our minds create our physical and emotional reality. So, we have to really work on our minds and our brains. What you focus on and think about become your reality. I totally believe beliefs are biological, and when you believe or think, you will create. You could call it the law of attraction, I call it the law of connected energies. So we attract energies that we're thinking. Great topic to think more about. I love you to become get an Oscar winning film, be the Oscar winning filmmaker of your life. Create a film that you want to see. Don't go watch Freddy Krueger or The Shining and think that's your life. What a miserable way to go through the day. Really important to create your vision and your purpose. Build your brain toolkit of power, connection, and safety every day. Here's a good exercise. Every day Keep a victory log. At the end of the day, write down the few things that you did during the day that brought you enjoyment, that brought you success. Nothing really big. It could be small things. It could be you waited at a green light. Um, I'm sorry, you waited at a red light and you didn't try to push through the yellow light. You, you, you helped an old person across the street. You picked up a few pieces of trash. Those are victories, okay? And lastly, express your gratitude to yourself, Express it to your loved ones, express it to your colleagues. If you're grateful that a coworker has helped you out, call up that person's manager and say, listen, I just want to thank you. The great job you're doing with, with that person. And I, I'm really grateful that we have a chance to work together. So next slide. So I believe as a psychologist and life coach, you really deserve to live an extraordinary life of success, accomplishment, and satisfaction. I wish you to go forth with power, focus, self-regulate your bodies, create safety, connect with others, come from love, be the wolf of love. Get rid of that wolf of hate. Change your genetic programming. I think we can change our genetic program. Actually, science has proven that. Create a new map for living and live in your immortality now. Yes, next one. So here's my new book. I didn't come to say goodbye, Navigating the Psychology of Immortality. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's got really good reviews. It's now an international bestseller. Whoa, whoa, an international bestseller. Can you, can you believe it? <laughs> so I'm really quite pleased about that. And I'm getting good reviews. We've had about 20 people write notes. We're trying to get them to write our notes, their notes on Amazon. And eventually, I think this book is going to become a New York Times bestseller. That's my goal. So that's a pretty good vision, isn't it? And that's from in part doing these seminars. So the webinars are designed to really give you an extraordinary life. They help me feel connected, more powerful. The more I do it, the more I feel safe. Every month we're going to do a, little, um, a, a new webinar, probably around the second or third week of the month. And we try to get it on a consistent basis. But as, I, as I said to you before, between these longer seminars, I'm going to post five, six-minute 
video posts giving you guidelines and action steps that you can take in order to live the extraordinary life you really, really deserve. So until we meet again, keep on navigating, resist that wolf of hate, pet that wolf of love, and have a great month.